Hello, I'm John Adams. Got a few tips in this second video lesson about digital painting with light techniques. And for this one I'm going to use Elements. I'm using Elements 4 in this example here. So let's just uh, start from scratch. We go to File, Open, and we'll use a different set of images this time. Spoon 1 to Spoon 5, which you'll find also on the CD. To uh, quickly select them, go to File, Open, then click on the first one, hold down the Shift key, click on the last one, and they'll all be selected. Then you just hit Open. Now, this may happen. They'll pop up and you'll only see one image. If this happens with the way you've got elements set up, all you need to do is click on this button up here, up at the top right, click on the multi-window mode, and you'll see your cascade of pictures as you normally would like to see them. So that's the first tip, to uh, click on the multi-window mode to see them all in the, all their glory. Then we simply go through and arrange them as we see fit. We want to find spoon one in here, there it is. We'll drag that over to one side. And then we're going to drag in all the images just as we did with the full version of Photoshop by selecting the move tool, holding down the shift key and dragging in spoon two. Closing it down and spoon three hold down shift, drag it in, release the mouse, close it down, and then we go to spoon 4, hold down shift, drag it in, close down spoon 4, and of course spoon 5. Hold down shift, drag it in with the move tool, and then close it down. Now, within this document, we'll just go to full frame so we can see it all. We'll just double click on the hand tool to uh, make that happen. There we go. Then we're going to have a look at our layers palette. Now, this is over in the dock on elements, so if you click on this little arrow here, it brings up the layers dock. But what you really want to do is actually bring out the layers palette separately. So just click on the layers tab and drag it onto the screen like so. And that way you, you release the layers palette from the dock and you can then close down the dock again by clicking on the arrow and that brings you your layers palette as you want to see it. There we go. Okay, the next stage is of course to uh, go to the light and blending mode for all of our layers. There they all are. There's our five images all stacked up together. And we simply select the light and blending mode for each of them. There's layer 4, then we take layer 3, layer 2, layer 1, and there we have it. That's all of our painting with light effects all onto one image and all blended together. Now, one of the big problems with painting with light techniques using this particular method is that you can make a bit of a mess of your image. You can have too much going on. And this is where this method is fantastic because you can select afterwards what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. Now, in this example, we can go through our separate layers one by one and decide what goes and what stays. Now, this layer four at the top here, that's the, uh, the sort of the the trail of light heading towards the head of the spoon. We're going to keep that one because that's kind of interesting and quite fun. Layer 3, do we want that? Well, I think we do because that's highlighting the back of the spoon, so that's quite fun. Layer 2, not so sure about that one. I don't think we need that. That's introducing uh, a, a detail that we possibly don't need in our finished image. So let's switch that off for the time being. Layer 1 we'll take a look at. Yeah, that kind of helps highlight the uh, the shaft of the spoon so we can keep that. As for the background, how does it look without it? Well I think potentially that looks stronger without the background. So we've made an editing decision here to get rid of two of our painting with light effects. And once you've done that and composed a painting with light image that's acceptable to you and you think is working well, all you need to do is get rid of these two layers which are surplus to requirements. A quick and easy way to do that, if you switch off the eye icons, all you need to do then is go to the fly out arrow, where the, the more arrow in elements, and select delete hidden layers. Click on that once, it'll ask you whether you want to do it, click yes, and you'll get rid of those two layers that you decided not to keep. Now we've simplified our layers palette to just three layers, we can then add our color effects as we see fit. So we're going to go through the same adjustment layer process. We'll start with layer 4 at the top of the stack, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Just click OK immediately and now we want to clip this layer to the layer immediately beneath. That way we do it exactly the same as in Photoshop, hold down the ALT key and then click on the line between when the icon changes. There we go. We do the same thing with layer 3. We highlight layer 3, click on the adjustment layer icon, select hue saturation, click OK, and then we clip the layer. Hold down Alt and click on the line. All done. Next one is layer 1. We highlight that layer first and foremost, then select the hue saturation adjustment layer, click OK to it, and then we need to clip this layer 
by holding Alt and clicking on the line. There we have it. So we've made all of our hue saturation adjustment layers. We haven't actually adjusted the colors yet because of course that comes next. And I think a nice way of doing this would be to use the uh, primary colors of light, red, green and blue. So we'll double click on this first hue sat adjustment layer and we're going to just move the hue slider to get a nice red color. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. About minus 30 or so. OK, let's click OK to that one. Next one, we double click on this hue saturation adjustment layer and we'll go for, oh, I guess a sort of a nice green color would be quite good. So somewhere in the 70s or 80s. There we go. Click OK. And then we go for, I guess, a nice blue color on this final adjustment layer just here. Double click there and move the hue slider to generate a nice blue color. There we have it. Click OK. So, as you can see from that, we've got all sorts of flexibility in how we actually compose the picture after we've taken our painting with the light shots. And we've also got all the same flexibility as with the full version of Photoshop on how we choose to color our lighting effects. So there's a, a good example of how you can use this particular method of digital painting with light to compose your image and finalize your choices. If you left this just to waving a torch about on one long exposure, you would never have this kind of flexibility. So enjoy practicing with that technique. The spoon pictures are on the CD as well. Spoon 1 to Spoon 5 JPEG, load them up and see what you can create. And once you've done it, do try it with your own. You only need very simple compositions. This is simply a spoon on a wooden table. That's all it took to make this rather dramatic, colourful image. So have a go at your own techniques. Use a, an exposure of about 4 seconds, an f-stop of round about f-16, and uh, see what you can mix up, because it's great fun and can add extraordinary effects to very ordinary subjects. OK, thanks for listening.